Hello and welcome to our short demo movie on how to migrate server workloads to Amazon Web Services with Platespin. It's going to be a very short demo, so we are just going to demonstrate the bare essentials. I'm going to first off configure a migration target. So I click on targets, I click on add targets to configure the first target. And then from the drop down list, I select the applicable target type, which is Amazon Cloud region in this case. I provide credentials. So access key, secret access key, and then I simply select the region that I want to migrate to, which in this case is US West. I test the credentials, and when that test is successful, then I can click the add target button there. And while Platespin is fully discovering the target, we're going to uh, also add a couple of source workloads. So I click on the source workload tab. I click on the add workload button. And I'm going to demonstrate using the most simple way of source workload discovery, which is discovery based on individual IP addresses. So I'm just going to enter a couple of IP addresses, starting with the first one. I add credentials, administrative credentials. I test them. I click Add New. And I'm just going to add two more. So I have one Windows 2008 and two Windows 2012 workloads. So I'm just adding all three of those. This is the final one. I click Add Workloads. They are in the process of being discovered and now the discovery is uh, completely finished. With the discovery completely finished, we can begin the configuration process of the first server workload. So I simply select the first one. I click the configure migration button. On this screen, you can select your migration target if you have multiple migration targets configured. But in this case, we only have one. So I'm just going to leave it to US West. Click the configure migration button. This is the main workload migration configuration page, and we're just going to focus on the settings that are relevant for AWS migrations. So let's first take a quick look at license type. Placepin supports AWS licensing and bring your own license for uh, Windows workloads. In this case, I'm going to leave it to auto, which defaults to AWS licensing for Windows workloads. We support also uh, various disk types, which in this case, I'm just going to leave it to general purpose SSD and various types of encryption uh, as well. We need to select a network for the replication traffic. So I'm just going to select uh, the PlaySpin VPC network here, which automatically brings in the only subnet that's available. You uh, can decide to not assign a public IP address, but in this case, I'm going to leave that checkbox checked. And we have to add uh, a security group. And I'm simply going to use the default security group that we have here in our environment. So that takes care of all the replication settings. Now let's take a look at the settings for the actual target workload. Uh, Platespin will suggest uh, a specific cloud instance size type for your uh, server based on the resources that it uh, detects on the, on the source server. Uh, but of course you can change that. So if you click on change cloud instance size, you can see all the types that we have uh, discovered here. So you can just select uh, any of those that apply. Um, in this case, I'm just going to leave it to the default that was selected by Platespin. You can decide to add tags to your uh, server. i um, just going to cancel out of that here. And we also support configuration of a placement group, an IAM role, and of course also uh, a key pair. So I'm just going to leave all those to the defaults. But I am, however, going to select a network. So this is the network that will be used by uh, the target workload after the migration, so in production. Um, so that network also brings in uh, the subnet. Uh, you can enable enhanced networking if so desired. And I also need to add a security group here. So I'm going to use the same security group, the default one. So select it, hit apply. So that takes care of the production network settings. And I'm now going to duplicate those settings for um, the test environments. So whenever we bring up the workload uh, to test it, so before cut over. So I'm just also selecting the defaults, security group here, apply. And now the workload uh, migration is completely configured. So I can click the save and prepare button. So all I need to do here is click the execute button to confirm the preparation. Usually takes a couple of minutes. We'll fast forward through that here. And once the migration is prepared, simply click the run migration button. You have the option to run a code over here already, but that's not considered a best practice because that means that you're not able to test your migration before rolling it out in production. So in this case, I'm just going to click execute. 
which starts the first full uh, replication of the server workload. Again, we're fast forwarding through that here. Once the first full replication is finished, we can test our workloads in AWS. So I click the test code over button. You have the option to perform an additional incremental replication, um, but for testing, that's not strictly necessary. So I'm just going to unselect this option here so um, that we, we can save some time while we bring up our workload in the test environment. Blitzpin is now preparing the test code over. Again, we're fast forwarding through these operations. Once the workload is ready for testing, we can simply go to the AWS Management Console, filter on the name. In this case, I'm just going to uh, filter on a portion of the name. And here we can see that our 2008 workload is indeed running. So I select it. When I select it, the connect button becomes available. I click the connect button, download the RDP information. This is all simple, standard RDP procedure. So I click connect, provide the credentials, click OK. And then we can log into our workload in the test environment. Once all testing has been done, we can close the RDP connection. Uh, and we can return to PlateSpin where we can mark the test either success or failure, um, depending on the outcome. In this case, I'm going to mark the test as a success and click execute so that PlateSpin can uh, bring down the, the test environment. Thanks to our test, we now know that our workload is going to run without any issue in uh, AWS. So we can start the actual production cutover process by clicking the run cutover button. In this case, I'm going to leave perform incremental replication selected because I want to make sure that all the latest deltas are synchronized from the source to the target before we cut over. I click execute. And PlateSpin will now run that final incremental replication immediately followed by the cutover process. So PlateSpin will bring down the source and boot the target. And again, we're fast forwarding through all these operations. Once the cutover has been done, you can scroll down, get some statistics on our uh, migration process. But let's go back to the uh, EC2 console. Let's find our migrated server by searching on its name. I select it, I click connect. I'm just going to download the RDP credentials and log in via RDP. And here is the server workload which has now been migrated from our source environment into AWS. Thank you for watching our short demo and see you next time.